Welcome to the Eras Tour! Want to see a show? There's no going round this ticket giant. So the website fully crashed and it put me back at the beginning. Are you joking? What? They waited in line for like six hours. But is it the seats or us that are being taken? Does that look like platinum seats to you? Not really. That practice must be stopped. We've got the spotlight on the biggest name in the ticket game. I think that they should set a cap for how much profit you can make from a ticket. And you are in the front row. It's not called the Ticket Fan Club. It's called the Ticket Business. We would like to see consumer law, which makes reselling tickets at a profit illegal. It's the people versus the ticket giant. One of the biggest names in entertainment is in the set. Drake is home. I'm so excited. Oh my god, we've been waiting since the summer. And it's all love for his all a blur tour in Toronto. You're here in line. You want to get Drake tickets yeah. tonight. How much are you willing to spend? $500. Well, I paid six fifty. Yeah, work the whole summer. You worked just the whole summer tickets. just to be here tonight. Yeah, literally. It's the true cost of being a fan. Many blame Ticketmaster for those high prices. I think Ticketmaster is getting ridiculous nowadays because no concert is affordable. We want to support our artists, and you're making it impossible. It's been over a decade since the world's largest concert promoter, Live Nation, merged with Ticketmaster to become Live Nation Entertainment, reporting record sales of more than 16 billion US just last year. Now, tough questions are being asked about how the company is changing the ticket game. While Canada stays silent, US lawmakers are asking what can be done Customers pay the price for these monopolistic acts with higher ticket prices and fees, lower quality, less choice, and less innovation. They're debating whether Live Nation and Ticketmaster should break up. Live Nation is so powerful that it doesn't even need to exert pressure. And fans want to know, can't the company do more to make shows more affordable? The ticket giant tells us they are not responsible for setting ticket prices. It's up to the promoters and artists. For most, the ticket journey starts here. This is the concert we want to go to. It's one month before Drake's show. Check this out. So, section 101, row six, seat eight. Good seats are still available, but they're not cheap. It says official platinum for $1,147.14. But platinum may not be as precious as you may think. When Pink drops word of her Montreal show, one diehard fan is ready to go. Valerie? Yes, hi. hi. Asha. Hi, nice to meet you. I was so excited that I was shaking. <laughs> it was been an hour and a half that I was online trying to, to buy tickets. Valerie Richards shells out $350 for row one, section 332. When you saw platinum tickets, what were you thinking? So I thought in myself, it should be a very nice place because it says platinum. Only after Pink announces a second show does Valerie realize those seats aren't so special after all. So she buys a new batch, just six bucks more per ticket. So this is the ticket that I've bought hours later for the second section, first row. And you're in a whole different section. Yeah, closer to the stage. Ticketmaster says it has never claimed platinum means better seats. Artists can choose to use platinum pricing, which means the cost of tickets goes up or down, depending on demand. Lawyer Joey Zucran is representing Valerie and other Canadians fighting back against the company. Every time there's a concert or a high-demand event, 
Ticketmaster will qualify certain seats as platinum. The problem is they're qualifying these platinum seats as platinum when they're not. They're nosebleeds and they're some of the worst seats in the house and they're just taking advantage and squeezing money out of consumers' pockets. He believes holding back concert dates creates false scarcity. After they announce this first show and after people have spent their hard-earned money um, to go to a concert, they announce a second show, which, in our view, they absolutely know, knew about because I don't think Drake or Pink, you know, get a text message from Ticketmaster saying, hey, we did well the first show, would you like to get a second show? I think these shows have been planned for weeks, months, maybe even years in advance. And get this, Valerie hits another snag when she tries to offload her first tickets. Now, how did you resell those tickets? They are not sold. No? I still have them. I tried on Ticketmaster, and um, they take 15% for fees. They're charging you to yeah. resell your tickets? Yeah. Ticketmaster touts its fan-to-fan -fan resale site as a way to make more seats available. But Valerie questions who really benefits here. When I think about that, I'm a bit disappointed because I was so happy to go to the show, you know? It was a thrill, but now it has changed to something not really uh, happy, let's say. In court, Joey will argue for a class action case, claiming the practice of naming seeds platinum is misleading and against the law. But back at the Drake concert, there's another issue that has folks fuming. Resellers, like, it's insane. Fans want to see Ticketmaster do more to combat online scalpers, also known as resellers, making a huge profit. I don't think resellers should be allowed to be reselling the tickets. It's not fair to certain people. I just hope there's something they can do, because yeah, I love going to concerts, and those resellers are not good. Ticketmaster promises to crack down. Well, good evening, Toronto, and welcome. After a long wait, Taylor Swift finally announces she's coming to Canada. And fan verification codes are pushed as a solution to stop reselling. But does it work? Welcome back. We're talking about buying tickets, selling tickets, making sure that you have all fun with your taste. Enter reseller and YouTuber Shiraz Marwani. Your day is today? Thursday, you know what that means? Ticket tip Thursday. I've got some season ticket uh, booklets here. I've got, you know, some other tickets, tons and tons of them. This is his lucrative side hustle. I sold a total of 2,997 tickets in 2021. That's it's a pretty good number. But that turns into sale of $339,321. We're getting an inside look as he tries to get Taylor tour tickets. This is for the November 14th concert date. Yes. 2024. There's been a lot of hype around her shows stateside. 14 million people hit the site, including bots. And the website fully crashed, and it put me back at the beginning. And I waited in line for like six hours. I'm so sorry now. <laughs> for her Canadian stop, I am manifesting. We all got calls. Please, please. Fans have to be armed with an account and access code to buy. Shiraz already has multiple accounts. You're in. We're in. Let's see what we can find. Pre-sale code you've typed in there. Uh, We're at the map. Sit tight. We're securing your verified we're tickets. We're all fighting with each other for the, the same. last seats available. Whatever scraps we can find, essentially. Are you a Swifty? Uh, no, I'm not a huge music person in general. Like my my <laughs> thing is it's You're classical. You're killing me. No, classical music is my thing. A couple of failed attempts and a few access codes later, Shiraz strikes gold. Row 24, so I'm very happy. <laughs> Four floor tickets for about $600 each. He swiftly reposts them. Let's just start at a 5,000 and just see. <sighs> yep, five grand for one ticket, and that's US. So it'll be on StubHub, it'll be on SeatGeek, TickPick, if Ticketmaster turns on resale. Because there's such little inventory available right now, the price you can set can be higher than what you would expect. 
Eventually, he drops the price to about 2,500, but it's clear Ticketmaster's access codes don't stop resellers like him. People will say, oh my God, you're the reason why I couldn't get tickets. But I always come back and say, if I didn't do it, someone else would have. We tell fans about Shiraz's swift ticks. That's the that's what, we're, that's, that's what we're talking about. With the resale value, I don't think that should be allowed. Oh, oh no way. That is crazy. That's, that is crazy. crazy. There should be a cap. Honestly, I think that they should set a cap for how much profit you can make from a ticket. So what will it take to put the power back in the hands of fans? What is really required is consumer law to prevent abuse. The people push back against the giant, and its former CEO pushes back. No one pays more for a ticket than they want. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter at cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your marketplace. We're putting the high price of tickets to the test. I think it's unfair to the fans. I feel terrible. It honestly breaks my heart. Taking on your frustration and asking, what's it going to take to put fandom back in reach? Earlier this year, Swifties joined the fight. Taylor Swift fans who were shut out of her Eras tour have made a federal case out of it. They are taking Ticketmaster to court in downtown LA this morning. They decided to file suit against the ticket company, claiming fraud and antitrust violations. It's about being fair to the average American consumer, and we have a right to consume responsibly, and we can't do that under the oppressive and predatory business practices of Ticketmaster and Live Nation. They're hoping for a ruling that better protects all concert goers. But the company has asked for the case to be thrown out, saying fans agree to the terms when buying tickets. To get more insight, we set our sights on LA and connect with one man who sees nothing wrong with the market today. I know something about the ticket business, okay? Fred Rosen is the former head of Ticketmaster. He left 25 years ago. He's credited with making it a household name. It's not called the Ticket Fan Club. It's not called the Ticket Advocate. It's called the Ticket Business. This is what reporters like you don't understand. We have spoken to people who are crying out and saying it is not fair. The premise of your interview is that you think the world isn't fair. Let's start with the fact the world isn't fair to start with. This is not my premise. This is the premise of millions of people who have complained. Here's what I think. I think it's called the ticket business. And it's a supply and demand curve. Federal officials have called it a monopoly. Well, then they should do something about it instead of talking about it. Krista Brown believes it's not just government action. Fans have some power of their own. She's a policy analyst for a group working to bust up monopolies. Do these class action lawsuits make a difference? Class action lawsuits are important. They will illustrate various ways that the market is not competitive. Rosen's prediction? I will tell you this. I lived with enough lawsuits from all the class action lawyers and even we had an antitrust investigation. All the ticket lawsuits will fail. You watch. But for Montreal or Mathieu Trudel, even a small fight is worth having. Hey, Mathieu. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right. He sues over a misleading fee added after checkout on Ticketmaster's site. And at the end, say, you want to have the insurance to. It's a kind of check box, and I check it just to see it have an impact on the final price because I'm not a fan of uh, insurance. And I say, oh, it's the same price. Believing it's free, he opts in. Later in an email, he discovers he's actually charged $17.44. You feel it's a hidden fee? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's false and misleading information for me. Matthew's case is settled. The insurance company refunds his money. And Ticketmaster has now made the price of insurance clear. It's a kind of admission that it's unclear because they already changed it. Hidden fees have been a long-time complaint for fans. 
In fact, the feds hit them with a fine of $4.5 million back in 2019 over adding fees late in the purchasing process. They agreed to stop doing it. And more recently in the U.S. A live nation will automatically list all the prices up front. The company moves to all-in-one pricing, just ahead of a government announcement to scrap junk fees. You know, if these rules are finalized, they won't just be voluntarily, they'll be made mandatory. All positive steps toward change, according to Krista Brown. It does put pressure on enforcers to actually uphold the law. An artist taking center stage could help this fight. You see artists who try and go around Ticketmaster, but it's really difficult because they either have exclusivity with the largest venues or they outright own them. They're even being called out in song. Just listen to Lawrence the Band with John Bellion. The Pixies have also protested. So we're in New York City to catch up with their manager, Richard Jones, ahead of their show. They've sidestepped Ticketmaster before, selling their own tickets with no added fees. What is really required is consumer law to prevent abuse. We would like to see consumer law, which makes reselling tickets at a profit illegal. You just want it banned? Yes. It will remove the abuse of the system, and I th uh, there will be more tickets to go around at the correct price. Fred Rosen says, good luck with that. Scalping wouldn't happen if the public didn't want it. The public buys the tickets, the public scalps the tickets, the public buys in the resale market, the public complains about the resale market. The public is on every side of the transaction. So you're saying there is money to be had in scalping tickets and reselling, and it's just fine. The reality is as follows. What makes people want to go is emotion. You cannot regulate emotion. But Richard says it impacts the entire concert experience. The artists aren't receiving any of that money. So the artists can't put it into the production of a show. They can't make the show better. They can't do, have a bigger stage set, make an amazing tour, because they're not getting that money, because that money's been hived off elsewhere. And he knows there's a better way. Ireland and Norway passed laws banning reselling, making the system more fair over there. Well, when we put shows on sale in Ireland, you notice on all the secondary sites, uh, you notice the lack of tickets for resale at a profit. It, it is actually working, yes. There are countries who are banning reselling. How do you feel about that as a way to get around this? I live in a free society. Next. So you don't agree with it? Nah. I only have one other question for you, though. You know, you are, to some degree, far removed from Ticketmaster. Yes. Why do you continue to speak out? Why not? Rosen may be happy to share his views, but Ticketmaster won't talk on camera. They tell us they only keep about 5% of a ticket's overall value, and to suggest otherwise is a misperception. <laughs> Meantime, inside the OVO arena, The vibe is live. But the cost to be here? About 720 each. 700. I think it was like 700. It's definitely ridiculous. I was totally shocked. I don't think I'll be able to afford rent with this. I pay about 500 bucks for my seat all the way up here in section 300, which means we all got to zoom in for views of Drake. So next time you're looking for concert tickets, here's a few tips. Wait close to the date to try and score a deal online. Sometimes resellers may be desperate to get rid of whatever stock they have left. And don't be afraid to hit up the box office last minute to get seats for cheap. But perhaps the best advice, once you're in the door, take it all in and enjoy the moment. <laughs>